Hello everybody, my name is Ian King and I'm the lecturer in the course uh, Economics 2020 Macroeconomic Theory. I'm going to start off by just going over a brief course outline which really uh, cherry picks its way through uh, ingredients in the uh, ECP. And, and then I'll actually turn to the ECP and, and pick out a couple of other things uh, from the ECP itself. But just to start, uh, the, 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 what this course is, is uh, of course an intermediate level macroeconomic theory. And the emphasis is on really developing modeling skills. So using mathematical models in order to analyze um, macroeconomies and policies and uh, understand the different debates uh, using models as, as a guideline for what, uh, what might happen. So we look at uh, core material uh, that's really from the, what I say, the heart of modern macroeconomics. We'll uh, start off with a very simple Keynesian macroeconomic model that's known actually as the Keynesian cross model. Then we'll move on to a more sophisticated model known as the ISLM model. And then uh, we'll do a little bit of a switch uh, into non-Keynesian material and look at something called the classical model. And we'll be looking at, in general, um, several theories of aggregate supply. And uh, then we'll go on to look at unemployment, Phillips curves, expectations, the open economy growth, and government debt, lots of different topics. Um, now, throughout, the, uh, the purpose really is um, to get people to understand the mechanics of these series, to analyze these different macroeconomic events. For example, of course, the classic example these days is uh, the global financial crisis. And think about alternative policy prescriptions, how one might get out of a crisis like that one. Now, contacts, so there's one lecture a week. It's two hours long. Uh, it's on Thursdays between 10 and 12 in uh, Building 3, Room 206. There's also one-hour tutorials held most weeks, starting uh, on week two, and you have to sign up for a particular tutorial. So the tutorials themselves are, are used for various uh, purposes. Uh, at the beginning, actually, they'll be used to just give you a bit of a mathematical refresher to make sure that you have um, enough mathematical technique right at the front of your brain in order to be able to uh, understand the material that we go through. And then later on, uh, the tutorials would go through the assignments that we're using in this course. Office hours. My office hours are on uh, Thursdays between 1 and 3, so one hour after the lecture. I'm in the Colin Clark Building, which is Building 39, in Room 620. All right, assessment. Now, assessment is, uh, there'll be a two-hour end of semester exam for 50%. There are going to be four class assignments. Each one is worth 5% for a total of 20% for the assignments and a one-hour mid-semester exam for 30%. Now, even though the assignments are relatively um, small in the sense that they do, they're only 5% each, it's extremely important that you do the assignments because they're really designed to um, give you practice for the skills that you'll need to do well in your midterm and final exams. I don't mind people working together on the assignments, but it's very important that the assignment that you actually hand in is um, your own assignment. You can't just copy someone else's assignment. Lecture notes. I'll be making the lecture notes available uh, throughout the course uh, through Blackboard. They are the primary source material for the course for assessment. So in general, the material that is provided in the course, which consists of the lecture notes, the tutorials, and the assignments, they're intended to be comprehensive for what's examinable. So what I mean by that is that that is the material that's going to be examinable. I've listed a couple of textbooks here. Uh, these textbooks are optional, so there is no required textbook for this course. These textbooks, if you're interested in purchasing uh, one of them or both of them, uh, are really for background reading if you want to read more on some of these subjects or if, if you find that it helps you uh, to 
go more deeply into some of these topics. The first one I mention here is by Blanchard and Sheen. It's called Macroeconomics, and the fourth edition, uh, fourth Australian edition. And the second one is uh, Dornbush, Bodman, Fisher and Starts, called Macroeconomics, the third edition. They're both uh, good textbooks, but they don't do everything that we do in this course, and we don't do everything that's in that, in those textbooks. So there's, there's some overlap, but not a perfect overlap for either textbook. Now, I've listed here some key dates. First of all, Thursday, February 28th, Assignment 1 handed out. So that's already been handed out now. That's available online uh, through Blackboard. Monday, March 11th, that's when Assignment 1 is due in. Uh, and so it must be handed in at 9 o'clock, by 9 o'clock, at least by 9 o'clock on uh, Monday, March 11th. Um, and the reason I, I'm so strict about the deadline is that in that week's tutorials, we're going to go over the assignments um, as soon as you've handed them in. So this really reflects my philosophy that it makes sense to go over assignments right when they're still fresh in your mind rather than wait a week or two until they've been uh, marked. So the, uh, it's strict that you must get it in by 9 a.m. on that Monday. And it's, it's, this is for every assignment. It's always a Monday morning at 9 a.m. Now, if for some reason you cannot um, prepare your assignment by that time, what will happen is that the weight from that assignment will be transferred either to the midterm, if it's for assignments one or two, or the final exam, if it's assignments three or four. Now, when I made up this, uh, um, when I made up this course outline, I didn't know the mid-semester test. And we've just been informed now of the date for the mid-semester test, and it is, in fact, Saturday, March 30th. Um, March 25th, sorry, assignment two is handed out on March the 11th, and it's due on March 25th. And then um, on March 25th, it's the same deal. You have to hand it in uh, by Monday morning at 9 a.m. And at that point, also assignment three will be handed out. And that one is due in on uh, Monday, April the 8th. Then there's a break between uh, April 19th and 28th. And on April 29th, uh, assignment four will be handed out. And it will be due in on uh, uh, the two weeks from then, Monday the 13th of May. And then finally, uh, on uh, Thursday, May 30th, there'll be the final lecture and review. Topics. So I'll just briefly go over the main topics. There are actually eight major topics in this course, and that's how the course notes are organized. There are 13 weeks of lectures, and um, typically a lecture will cover some of one topic and some of another. So uh, topic number one is introduction, national accounts, and the basic Keynesian model. So some uh, simple stuff at the beginning. Uh, Topic number two is the ISLM model, which is a very uh, well-known and uh, very used model in macroeconomics. Topic number three is we start looking at uh, aggregate supply, and that's the first version of aggregate supply, the classical model. Now, the midterm covers topics one through three. Okay, everything in, in topics one through three. After that, then we go topic four, which is the second uh, topic on aggregate supply, looking at the Keynesian labor market. Then um, topic five is the open economy. Finally, we'll actually look at economies that trade with other economies. Section six, or topic six, is um, the Phillips curves and expectations. We'll start looking at dynamic models. And in uh, topic seven, different theories of unemployment. We'll consider more modern theories of unemployment. And then finally, uh, topic eight, we'll be looking at uh, actually the very long run, economic growth. Rules and expectations. Okay. Now with the lectures, um, I expect and hope that you'll attend the lectures. Of course, we have no way of policing that, and you don't have to attend the lectures, but I strongly recommend that you do attend the lectures. 
Now, I say also no private talking during lectures. What I mean by that is I don't mind if um, you're sitting with someone and you're helping them understand something that I've just said, just pointing something out in the notes. And the, you know, the point is that you, I, I want everybody to understand as much as possible in the room when I lecture. So that's fine if you're doing something like that. But if you're actually just talking about something else entirely, uh, then, then I really don't want you to do that. It's, it can be quite disruptive and uh, um, there's, really, um, there's really no place for that kind of talk in, during the lecture. Mobile phones uh, should be either turned off or made silent during the lecture. Um, student participation is encouraged in lectures. It helps to keep it a, um, an environment that's uh, interesting with questions. And uh, I, I, I realize it's a large uh, lecture theater and you may feel a little bit intimidated by the size of the class and so on. But um, please don't be, um, don't be shy and, and try and ask questions if you, if you um, have any serious questions you'd like to answer. Okay, um, now just a, a quick word on how much time you really need to put into this course in order to be successful. So to perform optimally in this course, you should be willing to devote between four to six hours of studying, just the lecture notes, going through the studying, plus the two, hour, two hours of lectures, so that's now uh, six to eight hours, one hour of tutorial time, plus three hours of time on assignments and tutorial handouts. This comes to actually a total of eight to 10 hours per week. That sounds like a lot, but that's really what you need to invest your time in if you really want to do well in a course like this. And finally, let me just say feedback and suggestions are welcome at all times. Let me just uh, point out a couple of things from the ECP for the course. Really, I want to draw your attention to section 4.1, Learning Activities, the, the table that's provided there. So it breaks it down into each week, the activities uh, that we do in this course. And uh, there's, you'll see that there, um, uh, well, the first uh, column is, is really just the dates for each week. The second column tells you about the, uh, the contents of the lectures. Uh, the third column tells you about the tutorial for that week. And the fourth column gives us other activities. All right, so let's just walk through a couple of weeks of this just to give you the idea. So in lecture, in, in the first week, we do lecture one, and that's the introduction and Keynesian cross model. So you'll see the, uh, the, the main topics for this uh, lecture. Uh, first of all, I do a brief math review, just a couple of pages of math review. Uh, then uh, n some national accounting identities, and then look at some key theoretical concepts, and then go into an introduction to the, uh, the main model for this uh, particular topic, which is the Keynesian cross model. So now there are listed here the readings and references. So you'll see that the notes, which are also slides, uh, are from, there are two, um, two sets of notes available on Blackboard that you'll see for this um, for this topic. First of all, the mathematical refresher notes, and then also uh, topic one notes. I'll say just a word about the mathematical refresher notes. This is the mathematics in there. We won't be covering all of that uh, in this course. It's really a lot of it is there just for your reference. But I will be picking a few points out of the mathematical refresher uh, that we need. Uh, to, uh, for you to be able to understand the material uh, that, that we cover in the lectures. So in this uh, first lecture, uh, I'm only looking at two pages of the Mathematical Refresher Notes, um, slides 43 and 44. Then, with that done, then we move to topic number one, and I'll be covering uh, notes, uh, topic number one notes, um, one to 50. Uh, so that is not actually all of the slides in topic one. Actually, the uh, topic one goes all the way to 89 slides, but we'll only be covering the first 50 slides in topic one. There's, as you'll see in the first week, there's no tutorial. Um, other activities, assignment one is actually handed out uh, that, uh, that week. So it's already handed out. 
As we move into the second week, um, so lecture two will be we'll, we'll pick up again the Keynesian cross model, more of that, and then we move into the ISLM model, which is really the second topic. And there are some um, uh, sub um, categories here. Balance, the balanced budget multiplier, the paradox of thrift, and so on. Here's a list of things that we'll be looking at. And then, again, you'll see the readings that are re relevant for this lecture. So the notes and slides, topic one. And this is slides 51 through 89 of topic one. And then, depending on time, of course, these are. this is always depending on how, uh, how quickly you manage to get through this material. But I'm hoping that in the second week, we'll get into topic number two, at least note um, slides one through nine. And then in the tutorial in week two, week two has tutorial one. There's a brief math review uh, and also just a review of some of the material that has actually happened in the lecture, again, to really uh, help people get a bit of a start on the assignment, and so on. And the, uh, it, that's the way it goes for the rest of the 13 weeks.